All right, guys, Grumpy is back. As promised, uh, here we are in part two, uh, looking at the uh, Max Books uh, Lumi. And uh, now we're going to take a little bit more of a deep uh, analysis on what the device is doing in terms of DNS requests. And uh, we're going to take a look at a little bit of, uh, of some protocols. Someone was requesting that as well. So I'll do the best that I can here. This is I'm just working off my uh, my home setup. So this isn't this isn't actually in one of my labs where I have a lot more equipment set up. I don't know if I have the time to do that. But anyways, let's get started. It's not wasting time. I'm just going to turn on the Max books here, and uh, as you can see, I have Pi Hole in the back running. And for anyone that doesn't know what Pi Hole is, Pi Hole is basically a uh, a DNS blocker. So it it downloads. Um, lists of uh, known malicious sites and it automatically can block them. So basically the uh, Max Books Lumi, its DNS server is technically uh, Pi-hole over here. So any DNS requests that are made go straight through Pi-hole. So I just booted up the device here. So just looking at uh, Pi-hole here, we see some of the stuff we already saw when I was doing the proxy. Um, but as you can see, we're also seeing some, just some weird host names here, like these guys here. So we've got some Google stuff, uh, quite a bit of local domain stuff. So the, this could be internal applications that are uh, trying to uh, talk, talk to certain applications on the device itself. We can see here that we got that yun.tim.qq.com here again. And um, so far, uh, pretty good news because none of these um, none of these URLs are being blocked by Pi-hole. So um, in the default list that I have going on here, uh, so far none of them are being considered malicious. So let's go to the next page, and we can see that um, we're still looking pretty good here. Uh, we do see some. Uh, there's the EN ROM one here for the firmware updates. And it looks like there's an NTP uh, request that's being made for time. Nothing looks too bad here. So I'm going to go ahead and crack open the App Store. And I'm going to just pipe through a couple of these categories. And I'm going to close that. And I'm going to open up, uh, let's say... The library here for a second. I'm gonna click on the store. Um, go back to apps. Click on push read, which is where you need the account <clears throat> to store uh, all the data in their cloud. Open the gallery some weird icons in here. I ne actually never clicked on this before. I guess these look like icons for, yeah, for that. Yeah, these are just icons that you're seeing in the App Store. Um, so I'm gonna open the browser. Let's open the browser. Of course we get the certificate error. Again, I'm going to say proceed. And let's do a refresh of Pi Hole here for a second. Today. Today. So after launching the browser here, we can see what's been blocked by Pi Hole. And there's not too much here. Just a typical Google Analytics stuff. And there's an alexametrics.com that's been blocked here. And those are fine. Um, at some point, we'll probably see that yun, what is that, yun. Yeah, so this yun.tim.qq.com. If you remember in the first video, I think that this was the uh, telemetry thing or something to do with telemetry. But actually, if I look up this, 
if I look up that domain, it's some sort of chat application. And what I think that is, is in the feedback section, I think they may be using this this feedback section um, that's linked that's linked into this messaging that's linked into this messaging uh, application uh, this tim.qq.com. So it'd be interesting to see uh, what would happen if we did something like if we blacklisted this domain. So I actually have them in here. Um, I don't really think it does too much, but it may actually disable the feedback form. I'm not sure. So if I enable blocking uh, yun.tim.qq.com. Um, I actually did block it for a while before I did this video and I didn't notice any uh, any issues. But if we bring up uh, back the midim proxy and now that I have that blocked, if I usually leave it for five or 10 minutes, I'll see some, just some probes from that yun.tim.qq.com. Uh, uh, URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here for a couple of minutes. I'll pause the video and uh, I'm going to see if uh, we see any more requests to that domain since I've blocked them now in Pi-hole. All right, so I've left it here for a few minutes. Uh, 50, 1553 was the last time and there would have definitely been some probes at that point. So, All right, so we didn't see too many interesting uh, items <clears throat> in Pi-hole. Pretty much the same that we saw with the uh, Midim proxy the proxy server running. So what I did was I jumped onto the router and uh, created a packet capture and just let it run uh, through a few minutes of me clicking the same things I was doing before, clicking on apps, clicking on browser. So I have the PCAP file here loaded up in Wireshark. And uh, yeah, I'm just seeing the same, same stuff. So we're just seeing some NTP requests coming in, DHCP obviously to get the IP, there's the time requests and then um here's um most of the actually i think all of the requests that we were seeing in the original midim proxy so we can see the same ip addresses talking on mostly what our port 8080 here to this ip address 49 51 42 203 to port 8080 there's a, an encrypted uh, packet here going to 4752.198.197, which is similar locations to uh, where we saw before. But other than that, like I was mentioning before, this device doesn't doesn't really do much if you're not using it. If you're not clicking on anything or accessing anything, it doesn't uh, do much, it just sits there pretty much idle. So I don't know if I have anything else really to add. Um, and here's some of uh, requests from the device itself from port 8080 to uh, a random port out there to these uh, 49.ip addresses, which uh, most of them are uh, Chinese based. So other than that, I would say, uh, yeah, the device looks pretty clean. I mean, um, <clears throat> what I might, uh, what I'm gonna do myself is I really don't want to install the Google app, uh, the Google Play Store. So what I might do is I might try to sideload some of app, some apps that I think are worthwhile having on this device. So I don't have to uh, engage in any of the Google sort of telemetry and uh, uh, spying as well. So uh, yeah, if you guys wanna see more uh, videos uh, on the uh, on the Lumi, on the Onyx Books Lumi, uh, let me know. But this was uh, pretty much just a basic network analysis. I don't see anything that would uh, want me to dive in a little deeper yet anyways. That's not to say in new firmwares there won't be um, anything come up, but maybe once in a while I'll revisit this. Um, remember, you don't have to connect this device to the internet. You can you can uh, literally just plug in a USB key using the USB-C uh, dongle that they do provide, and you can just use a USB key and load up your uh, your books from there, and no need to get onto the network. So that's another way you can use this completely offline. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for joining in. See you guys in the next one.